entre le Québec et Rome. Muy buenas tardes, eh, muchas gracias nuevamente a todos quienes están aquí, espero que tengamos aún más eh, audiencia que eh, la sesión anterior. Eh, en especial saludos y ojalá que estén eh, mis amigos que he invitado de Argentina, Brasil, Ecuador, México, eh, Costa Rica y por supuesto a toda la gente de Chile. Damos nuevamente las gracias a la Asociación Chilena eh, de Endoscopía Digestiva, a la Sociedad Chilena de Gastroenterología por esta gran oportunidad y eh, ahora vamos a presentar nuevamente al doctor Tsukasa Ishida, quien es eh, médico gastroenterólogo de la Universidad de Kobe en Japón, quien nos va a hablar acerca de la disección submucosa endoscópica. Eh, hemos llamado a esto eh, TIPS eh, en ESD, chateando con un experto. Así que por favor no olviden de enviar eh, por WhatsApp todas las dudas que tengan eh, y sin más dejo al doctor Tsukasa Ishida. Uh. Uh, thank you very much, uh, very uh, for the nice uh, introduction for me, uh, Dr. Andres, and uh, uh, I'm deeply appreciate the, uh, to invite me. So now uh, I'm talking about the tips on the ESD procedure. I'm from Kobe University, so uh, just start now. So this is what is uh, endoscopic submucosal dissections. Uh, I show the history of endoscopic dissections. So uh, the, the history uh, start from the polypectomies and the laser dissections. A lot of uh, the procedures. So EMR was uh, developing and the became widespread in the in the end of the 1990s ESD was developed uh, is a, uh, the first uh, to uh, 1998 so because uh, we are uh, we want to remove endoscopically large superficial regions so uh, and uh, I'd like uh, I am we are uh, a lot of devices uh, developed. So uh, now the time is changed from EMR to ESD in Japan. So EMR, I'd like to show the arranged EMR. Uh, we have sold how to remove the large regions using the snares. So. Uh, Sumer EMR and the strip biopsy is a it's a two channels method. So and the uh, EMRC is a cap and the suction method. So and the EMR is band ligated the, uh, and the initially uh, ligated the band rubber band and then uh, just below the band cut the by snares. So this is a milestone ESD case using a uh, insulation uh, tips uh, electrosurgical knife. Uh, we are so-called <coughs> IT knives. Uh, two centimeter flat, flat regions at rectum can remove the end block. Now we can more safety to easy uh, to remove. So, uh, US, uh, ESD has developed while many innovation has done. For example, injection solutions and uh, electrosurgical unit and the uh, endo knives visualization, uh, for example, distal attachment. So, and the water jet and the uh, injection needs. And then, also, uh, hemostatic forceps uh, and the equipment of, for the hemostasis. So I'm talking about the injection e needles. Uh, sodium hydrate is uh, uh, it's uh, useful for useful for the 
ESD procedures. But uh, now uh, it's a little bit expensive for us. So, but uh, uh, the elevated uh, is a more more good elevation uh, compared with the sea lines. So, and uh, also uh, it is important uh, electrical surgical units. Uh, before uh, the 1998, uh, we uh, produced uh, ICC 200. It's a uh, milestone of the uh, electrical uh, surgical unit. It contained microprocessors, had a sense charge in voltage due to increasing tissues impedance during the procedures. So it's, uh, it can. Uh, Dissect the avoid the bre much breathing. Now uh, the Bio Three is uh, new release to uh, uh, So uh, you can see the beautiful edge. Uh, this is uh, using a uh, LB ICC. So uh, and then. ESD using a flash knife. So before we are conventional using a conventional ESU, very rough the edge. But now uh, the micro microprocessor processor control the cutting edge. So more beautiful compa compared with the conventional EUS, e e ESU. So if you uh, put the uh, put the switch, start the initial incision phase, initial in incision phase, uh, and the cut sharply next to the end cut mode, soft coagulation get into after cutting phase. Therefore, cutting mode is cut mode with inhibit breathing for mixed coagulations. So you can see, uh, uh, I show you uh, videos. We can easy to cut mucosa without breathing. So ES, uh, electrosurgery is um, very important to cut and uh, avoid the breathing. And uh, uh, soft coagulation mode is automatically uh, set below the peak voltage, uh, ab uh, below the 200 vo voltages. So uh, with a peak voltage less uh, than 200 volt, only dehydration and the, uh, the, uh, the drying of the tissue occur without uh, spark generations. So you can see, we are uh, usually uh, using a soft coagulation uh, to avoid, uh, prevent the breathing for penetrating vessels. Now we are changing uh, soft coagulation, so, uh, low, uh, low uh, voltage, uh, low setting. So a little bit different, but. Uh, uh, soft coagulation is very useful for the preventing uh, breathing during uh, ESD procedures. Uh, soft coagulation is just pure coagulation and uh, doesn't cut the tissues. But when I when we discuss a subcausal ray, dissect the subcausal ray, we usually use a coagulation mode because this mode has a coagulation ability with uh, incision ability. Th therefore, we don't care to breathe from small vessels during uh, uh, dissecting submucosal layer, but we don't uh, forget to invalid to uh, penetrating vessels. Uh, so, so, uh, so I show the videos. Uh, this is post coagulation effect three and five fifty watts. 
and uh, its host coagulation is uh, suitable for the uh, submucosal dissection because uh, uh, so many vessels have uh, submucosal layers, but uh, soft coagulation is uh, uh, easy. Uh, the dis dissection ability and coagulation ability. So both ability has so uh, weird uh, while uh, cutting a uh, submucosal layers, uh, it can avoid uh, bleeding. So I'm talking about the in invention of the endoscopic knife. So ESD device was started when a needle knife, needle types knife, and they attach the insufficient tips. And uh, when I when we met the some difficult cases, uh, we have developed the devices. Uh, for the example, flex knife and the hook knife. And the end knife has been developed for various ways. For example, uh, flash typing. Uh, the for example, flash knife is a have a flashing functions, and the hook type a uh, hook knife is a, a little bit uh, can hook tissues, so uh, it can avoid the uh, muscle layer injury. And the uh, end knife, uh, uh, forceps types uh, uh, have uh, forceps types. This is uh, two we are uh, using uh, two types of the forceps knives. So um, we uh, usually use uh, uh, for, uh, hemostasis forces. It's uh, the will be combining uh, this uh, uh, this knives have cutting abilities so my mentor uh, dr. Toyonaga invented the for the end knife with flashing function in the world to uh, 2005 so this is uh, very useful uh, the com it's convenient uh, flushing into the submucosal layer. So end knife named the flush knife that uh, knife short needle rings compared with conventional needle knife and uh, get water jack functions. So it's it is uh, safer than the before the needle types knife. So you can see the videos. If you inject uh, uh, some cause area elevated, so you can uh, see it's uh, more easier to cut some cause areas. And uh, uh, in 2008, a flash knife have uh, attached the ball tip. So it likes a tip and attach the 0.9 millimeter balls. So uh, this ball uh, can uh, get the new ability, easy to scoop up the object. Uh, so if have a uh, ball tip, it can scoop up. And then uh, flash knife ball tip uh, is a improve the procedure speed and the hemostatic effect in the uh, clinical studies. So fresh uh, knife released in two th 2005, dual knife released in uh, 2008, the fresh knife bought tip in the 2008, and uh, now uh, in the invented into the knife uh, it has been developed for the same directions. So uh, all knives have a uh, flashing and the needle types. So more concentrated the uh, same way to the needles. Same uh, function has needles. So now uh, 2016 we have uh, uh, slimmed uh, flash 
uh, flash knife released. It's a uh, uh, it can swim uh, type, so we are uh, water filtration speed is uh, much higher than the uh, conventional types. So uh, we are a lot of uh, using uh, a lot of kind of equipment. So I can explain the uh, distal attachment. So this is a uh, uh, slit and hold distal attachment. So this uh, function has a uh, uh, water. If the water uh, doesn't uh, remain water, so uh, easy to uh, slit hold the water. Uh, easy to uh, pass away the uh, visualization, so it can easy to uh, it keep the clear views. So uh, you can see the quickly remove the uh, if the uh, inject the water, remove the pathway the uh, in front of the cameras. So and uh, uh, it is also uh, useful. Uh, this short SD hood make a good combination with a uh, flash knife. Uh, if the uh, it has uh, fibrosic areas, uh, you can see that uh, these attachments is uh, can uh, uh, elevate the lesion. So. Uh, this star attachment is much important because uh, we are using uh, only one scope. So this star attachment is uh, uh, and so uh, keep good uh, visualizations. So and the uh, hemostatic forceps is also. Uh, good equipment. Uh, you can see the during the ESDs, uh, the a lot of the breathing. So we are using a hemostasis forceps and then uh, forced uh, soft coagulation and quickly stop the breathing. So. Uh, hemostasis forceps is uh, one of the most important equipment. So now I'm talking about uh, uh, how to resect the uh, ESD procedures. Uh, as you can see, this is a uh, uh, vessel. Uh, the anatomical uh, of the vessels. So uh, the this is a mucosal epithelium. This is a mucosal area. This is a submucosal uh, layers. So you can see the submucosal layer is a less uh, vessel, less uh, vessels compared with uh, just above the uh, muco just below the mucosal layer because uh, so if you go into the su uh, deep submucosal layers you can only uh, uh, care these vessels so uh, ESD is uh, it's important appropriate cut lines so this is an uh, architecture like uh, grapes, uh, like a grape trees. So if you into the uh, some causal layers, uh, the base is uh, fewer than just above the uh, just 
uh, below the mucosal layers. So you can see best cells are removed with a tumor. I uh, think this is uh, appropriate. Uh, you can see the best cells. So this is uh, appropriate cut lines, dissections. So uh, we ex experience, uh, explained the uh, ESD history, but uh, my uh, ESD <coughs> history start from 2005. So I'm our mentor, Dr. Morita, teaching us uh, using uh, uh, ex vivo models, and uh, I watched, thinking, want to master the ESD procedures. This is uh, 2005, <laughs> and then uh, also uh, the at that time, Toyonaga is uh, in, but uh, Dr. Toyonaga, this is my mentor, and uh, he teach us using uh, ex vivo models. So uh, I would like to show the. Uh, ESD procedures, how to do the ESD procedures. So it now initially uh, injecting into the submucosal layers. So we are usually using a uh, hydrate uh, hyaluronated acid surrounding uh, lesions into the submucosal layers using uh, uh, needles. The second step, cutting mucosal uh, surrounding regions, mucosal incision is a line should. Second, I show the video. So, uh, the mucosal incisions. So, uh, the mucosal incision line should be five or ten millimeter. Uh, the edge from far from the uh, edge of the tumors because uh, uh, we sometimes uh, uh, if the injured uh, uh, tumors uh, pathological report is uh, horizontal edges of positives become so we uh, usually cut the little bit far from the five millimeter uh, from the edge of the tumors. And then uh, we are uh, conventionally you making a mucosal cup uh, flaps. Next, uh, this is pre prepared to make a frog make uh, make mucosal flap. We cut the edge uh, by stroke into the back and the uh, pulse. And then repeat cutting just above the muscle layer. You can see the muscle layer. That one, muscle layer. So if you, so you, uh, you should what, uh, see the just above the. Uh, you can cut them just above the mucosa, uh, muscle. This is the muscle layer. If you create the uh, mucosal flap, it's uh, much easier, uh, almost complete the uh, ESD procedures. So I cut mass, uh, mucosa over the lesions. I complete the circumferential, uh, circumferential mucosa incisions. So if you. Uh, You can see the connect to the 
サーファーサー,サーカンプリレジャルミシージョン。So finally,、uh, the forward views cutting the some causal layers and then finish the procedure. So, like this.、Uh, ESD is、uh, it important that、uh, histopathological examination can get the. So, uh, we, uh, uh, we can high quality embryo,、uh, we can get the high quality embryo dissection species. So, we、uh, evaluate the uh, uh, details of the specimen. So, this、uh, final report is a tubular virus adenoma with a focal high grade dysplasia. So,、uh, size is、uh, 4.1 and then Uh, 3.2 centimeters. So this is a、uh, uh, um, Philippines、uh, ESD cases.、Uh, even if the、uh, so、uh, foreign、uh, pathologist is a, it's a different、uh, things、uh, compared with the Japanese pathologist. So We are usually discuss the pathological examination、uh, with the、uh, Philippine doctors. So,、uh, if、uh, the pathological report,、uh, so I ordered two millimeter, a two millimeter divider evaluations of the species. So, it's important.、Uh, the ESCS procedure is,、uh, it is very important. Histopathological exam examinations. So, I would like to show the difficult cases. So, this region is uh, uh, less uh, curvatures, and the、uh, uh, location is the、uh, angle lesser curvatures. Thi it has、uh, uh, ulcer scars. So,、uh, This is uh, uh, very difficult to approach the region. So, initially, we are、uh, sucking airs, and then、uh, stomach is shrinking the wall. So, more easier to、uh, approach in the regions. So, this is the、uh, uh, initial way to. Uh, approaching the、uh, regions. So, this case is、uh, very hard to cross the regions.、Uh, if the、uh, sucking air is、uh, sufficiently, but still far from the scope. So, this is、uh, this video. A little bit、uh, far, so a little bit dangerous、uh, situations. So I, I don't want to cut these,、uh, these ways. So if you use、uh, balloons or march bending scope, more、uh, easier to cross the regions. So, you can see the、uh, visual. So, more、uh, approaching the regions. So, more safety methods this,、uh, in this video. So, if you, the ESD procedure is、uh, very important to approaching the close the regions. So finally, we are、uh, resect,、uh, completely resected,、uh, even if the、uh, much uh, severe fibrosis. So this is a、uh, uh, second case.、Uh, this is also lower corpus. Okay, location is the lower corpus to see and then with uh, ulcer scars. So. This region using a、uh, uh, clip and、uh, snares. 
so you can see the views. Initially deploy the clip and then uh, we uh, grasp the by snares. So we can see more easy to visualize. And finally, you can see more safer, we can uh, achieve the more safety uh, ESD procedures. So, uh, so we are uh, a lot of using a lot of equipment, so more safety visualized the region. So uh, this is a very important point of the ESD procedures. So uh, this is also a difficult case. This is colon, colon cases. It's located at the descending colon. LST, non-granular type, pro, uh, pseudo depressed types. Uh, initially, we we are very hard to detect uh, these regions, so we are using uh, spraying indigo carmine, so more easy to detect. Uh, but uh, if the preparation is bad, uh, this region is uh, overlooked. So we are uh, very important that uh, this these regions doesn't overlook uh, so we should uh, detect these regions so I can show you the uh, ESD procedures these regions uh, she have uh, uh, received uh, uh, many operations so uh, the control is very unstable so very hard to control so and we uh, use uh, forceps types now uh, knives and then we grasp so usually uh, needle type is need to the uh, moving the uh, knife so moving we we have to move the knives but the forceps types is uh, uh, just stop the region so we can uh, if you unstable situation that we can this uh, equipment is very useful for the unstable uh, situations so finally we can dissect the uh, these regions. So as you can see, this region is uh, 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 the center of the tumor uh, invade the submucosal layers. But uh, fortunately, this is uh, this region is uh, completely dissected, so it need it doesn't need uh, uh, surgical resection. So finally, I would like to show the uh, anal uh, case. This is a nodular uh, mixed types, uh, rectal uh, LST granular type. But the it tumor extends in the uh, anal barge. So or and this close to the uh, Inner, so so inner area is a, a lot of vessels uh, have a, a lot of vessels so you can see the so this is hemo uh, hemor hem so hemorrhoid so uh, you very uh, we are 
initially cut in the uh, shallow uh, layers. Avoid the uh, bleeding. And then uh, after the uh, shallow cut, ah, sorry. We are using a uh, uh, hemostasis forceps, avoid the bleeding. So these uh, vessels uh, pre-coagulate by uh, hemostasis forceps. So and then we uh, after the uh, coagulation. We are going to the uh, deep submucosal layer. So you can see the muscle layers, the just uh, left side, you can see the muscle layers. That's point, that's muscle layers. And if uh, the cast cut. <coughs> just below the mucosal layers, so easy to breathing. So sometimes vessels are injured due to breathing. So we are uh, very careful to breathe. So uh, if you dissect over the mucosal, uh, suspensory ligament, uh, you can see the uh, clear views. So uh, the anal area is a very, a lot of uh, ligaments. So we uh, cut this mucosal rig suspensory ligament. So we are more easier to after dissect the, these areas. So finally, uh, initially cut, and then uh, side cut, and then we are, it's like a wave sign. So uh, we cut the, <coughs> dissect the side wave, side, and And uh, so finally, uh, we are uh, uh, it uh, remain this region, center of the regions. We finally cut it. So uh, this is also uh, we we our important method. Uh, or preventing a breathing. So penetrating vessels, we are using a force coagulation, effect one and the ten. So if the so, uh, if turn white the vessel, not breathing, uh, completely breathing. So when I cut this uh, vessel, we are using a prevent, pre uh, we are uh, using a forced coagulation, avoid the breathing. So uh, this is fibrotic areas. We uh, use uh, dry cut, so it is important to uh, choosing uh, appropriate uh, setting. So we usually thinking about the uh, ESU setting. So uh, ESD is uh, one of the one of the important factors. Uh, 
how to use the ESU settings. So finally, uh, it can uh, resect by complete resect. So th this is uh, 70 millimeters by uh, 33 millimeters. This is a uh, uh, carcinoma in adenomas, so this is complete. It can resect completely. So uh, this is a. Uh, uh, the conclusions. Uh, goal of ESD is uh, uh, fini and uh, so re and dissect the tumors, and then finally we have to evaluate the uh, uh, histological assessment. So it, it's uh, <coughs> the one of the ESD's advantage is uh, we can get the uh, uh, good quality of the specimens. So if you uh, if you resect by piecemeal EMR cannot evaluate historical e e evaluations. So we are talking about uh, uh, training. So there is a uh, this is uh, our uh, ESD case, num the number of the ESD cases. So we are uh, usually, this is a little bit, uh, this is from two 2013 to 2014. So for one year, uh, esophageal regions, 87 cases, stomach regions, uh, 190 cases, uh, rectum and the colon, 115 cases for the for the years. Now a little bit changing, uh, stomach cases decreasing, but rectal colon is increasing, but so almost same as the uh, uh, number of cases. So we can, uh, beginners can uh, practice in the above the, about the, uh, for the beginners, uh, the we are using uh, uh, these methods. So if the uh, about uh, 50 stomach cases finished, so we can challenge in esophageal and the colorectal ESDs. But this is only Japanese cases. Uh, in the Western countries, cannot uh, cannot uh, perform this uh, train cannot train for this. Uh, kind of the way. So we have to uh, training methods so we can usually ha uh, held uh, hands-on seminars and step-by-step uh, -step challenging this. So uh, it's uh, over the um, initial observations, then assistant, uh, and uh, the expert starting the easy to case, for example, rectal cases. So, uh, um, Kobe University uh, uh, established the International Gastro Inter International Endoscopy Training Center in Kobe. So, uh, since two uh, 2010. So, we can, uh, we want to uh, read the ESD procedures. So, we can, uh, so, uh, this is Andres. So, <laughs> uh, we, uh, ESD is a very important, but, uh, but uh, then good procedure, but little bit hard to get master, hard to master the ESD procedure. So, uh, training is uh, very important for the, uh, especially Western countries and uh, also. Latin Americans. So uh, today is also uh, held a hands-on seminar. So using uh, uh, ex vivo models. So and uh, so I'm I'm thinking it's important uh, for 
how to train the Western countries expert. So uh, the, it's a very important co point for the, uh, making a expert in uh, ESD expert. So this is uh, uh, easy cases. Uh, it this case is uh, uh, when I uh, live in the Philippines. Uh, Philippine doctors uh, complete this this uh, regions. So uh, if the train uh, if the start the easy cases, I think. Uh, uh, they can dissect by and uh, yes, procedures. Uh, but uh, uh, I think uh, these cases complete uh, under the expert. I I think I uh, usually uh, suggest uh, how to cut. Uh, I talking to the uh, Philippine doctors. So. Uh, important uh, expert, there is expert. So I hope uh, in the Chile also uh, Dr. Andres and uh, uh, the, for example, his master the ESD. So and then uh, he uh, he spread the young age, young generations. I think uh, he teach the young generation and then they will be widely spreading these procedures. So uh, don't limit uh, your challenge and challenge your limits. So this is, uh, uh, but we need to think about the safety management. So it is important. So uh, and the uh, there is a expert uh, the procedure need to the un un and the run uh, pr procedure run under the expert so it is important this is a very challenging case uh, Dr. Toyonaga performed the ESD procedures so this is the appendix orifice uh, it can dissect the uh, almost completely dissect the appendix, uh, appendix areas. So I hope to uh, spread the ESD procedure because uh, it is very useful uh, procedures for getting uh, embryo species. Thank you very much for <laughs> your attention. I'm deeply appreciate this. Uh, Ajet and uh, I, I'm happy to join the uh, Noir Imperial uh, project. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Ishida, for your outstanding lecture about uh, therapeutic and specifically on ESD. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, so let's begin the discussion, <laughs> okay? Um, so, uh, okay, uh, polemics one first. Um, primero, eh, mis disculpas a mi amigo Nicolás González de Uruguay por no haber nombrado Uruguay, un gran saludo para ellos. Y eh, me gustaría eh, comentar a todos que también tenemos gente de Inglaterra <laughs> viendo la... La, la presentación del doctor Ichida. La primera, first question is uh, for a good friend of Uruguay, Dr. Nicolás González. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he has um, he ha has been curious about uh, ESD on lesions uh, LST granular type. Uh, for instance, the one you first uh, show it, mm -hmm. showed showed uh, it seems like like an LST homo granular homogeneous type. Uh, and actually, it was just an uh, bilus uh, adenoma, no invasive cancer. Yes. So, he, uh, of course, it's a four centimeter specimen, but mm -hmm. he would like to know what uh, are the advantages 
of uh, ESD if we can remove this lesion uh, safely this, uh, from na an oncological point of view by EMR. Uh, could you explain a little bit uh, about that? Yes. Uh, yes. The if uh, this is uh, ah sorry. I, I <laughs> Entonces de, que preguntaba Nicolás González de Uruguay es respecto a cuál es la necesidad de resecar por la técnica de ESD una lesión que corresponde a, una, a un LCT granular de tipo homogéneo que probablemente sea solamente un adenoma sin eh, cáncer invasor sections so yeah this pit pattern is almost uh, ty uh, uh, ty type 4 so maybe it predict uh, uh, it predict uh, uh, mucosal regions so I agree to the uh, piece mirror resection but the piece mirror resection is uh, a uh, really much higher the local recurrence. So if the local recurrence occurs, the ESD, pro uh, ESD procedure is also difficult. So uh, it's a very difficult question because uh, uh, Japanese uh, have a uh, e skill of the ESD. So we usually resect by ESD procedures, but uh, this region uh, is uh, we check if the check uh, the magnified endoscopy. Uh, no, uh, there is no five pit patterns. Uh, we uh, allow to resect by EMR piecemeal uh, procedures. Yes. Yes. Uh, to talk in Spanish. Yeah. So, yo, yo creo entonces que el, el tema aquí es que eh, si bien uno puede resecar por mucosectomía estas lesiones po en partes y no, y no poner en riesgo la oncología porque son solo adenomas eh, sin cáncer invasor, el problema es que la recidiva es mucho mayor que con ESD. Entonces el tema es, como ellos pueden hacer ESD de una manera segura, ellos prefieren eso para evitar la recurrencia. Nosotros, por otra parte, pensamos que puede ser de mayor riesgo y mayor costo, por lo tanto lo hacemos por mucosectomía, pero nos arriesgamos y nos metemos en el problema de que tenemos una mayor recurrencia. Entonces el tema ahí es si uno quiere eh, ir más allá y aprender una técnica que tiene menor recurrencia o quedarse en lo simple y barato y, y, y tener más recurrencia, pero eh, no arriesgarse. Y yo creo que las dos posturas son válidas. Um, Okay, and uh, can I ask you please about the, when we uh, face severe fibrosis? Uh, I think uh, you uh, usually recommend uh, two type of uh, er electrical current uh, conduction that um, might be, uh, for instance, as you show us, uh, the dry cut effect two cm watts. Yeah. But I have also seen uh, use the swift coagulation mode. Mm. So. Uh, Could you explain a little bit about what are the main difference of dry cut and swift coagulation mode in order to face fibrosis? Uh, yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah, mm, it's a little bit difficult uh, uh, questions because uh, uh, dry cut and uh, swift coagulation is a little bit similar to the cut, but. Uh, uh, Just uh, dry cut is a little, uh, just a little bit uh, cut uh, abilities um, better than the uh, <coughs> swift coagulation. So I think a severe fibrotic area is a more suitable and uh, dry cut compared with the swift cut, so swift coagulations. Yeah, I think so. Uh, my, my, it's my experience. I experience. Uh, so. And what is the main difference between endocut mode and dry cut? Ah, endocut mode is a uh, little bit different uh, because uh, uh, 
it has a peak voltage, so uh, power peak system. So uh, drag cut is a congenital, uh, continuously uh, same wave waveform, but uh, uh, end cut is a little bit uh, mix a uh, cut with a uh, coagulation mode. So um, so if uh, have a fibrotic areas. Uh, we are uh, usually use uh, dry cut. Just li last question about fibrosis because we usually face many fibrotic uh, lesions because mm. of many biopsies. Uh, um, uh, the question is: Do you still use uh, the needle type uh, uh, flash knife for fibrotic, uh, very fibrotic areas, or do you are using currently just the bolt type flash knife? Uh, before we uh, usually use uh, uh, very short tip of a uh, short uh, needle type flash knife, but uh, now uh, we uh, uh, usually use uh, tapping technique with a dry cut. So very uh, careful to cut, uh, so it can dissect by uh, ball tip type. So now mainly using uh, ball tip types. So Dr. Ishida, uh, Dr. Luis Marin from uh, Lima, Peru uh, would like to know something. Um, he said that sometimes uh, we, uh, they, I'm sorry, they found a lot of uh, fat, fat tissue on the submucosal layer mm. and that uh, the um, image uh, get very cloudy because uh, once you conduct the energy yeah. you cannot see. Do you have any tip about uh, that please? Yes, uh, uh, if the s uh, stomach and the uh, esophageal regions is can uh, remove quickly but the mainly uh, the cecum area and the ascending colon regions is hard to remove the scopes and then how to insert again and we are usually use uh, two kind of uh, two uh, two kind of ways to uh, keep the keep the clear visions uh, one is a uh, we are spraying the peg, uh, peg solutions, uh, and then uh, the other one is uh, uh, we are using uh, avoid. Uh, so, if if before the procedure we are using a drop on the uh, keeps uh, clear solutions. So. Uh, it, it it is dilute by uh, uh, water with uh, dimeticon, uh, so it s the spray in the by the accessory channels, it's more clear than the before. So uh, the we are using a two kind of way to keep the press. Please 30 seconds. Okay. Ya, aquí eh, el doctor Luis Marín le chuntó una tremenda pregunta porque este es un gran secreto cobiano. Eh, para las lesiones altas en el fondo da lo mismo porque nosotros podemos sacar el endoscopio y limpiar eh, el lente. Pero el tema es cómo hacerlo en colon y recto. Y ahí hay dos tips eh, que dio el doctor. Uno es que utilizan PEC, lo mismo que utilizan los pacientes para prepararse. En el fondo ellos eh, 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 tiran PEC a través del canal de trabajo contra la mucosa y eso usualmente permite... Eh, limpiar muy bien el lente y lo que están usando ahora es que mezclan el cleaner en el fondo con el que limpiamos el lente con un, un poquito de, de gas con le dicen ellos o simeticona o dimeticona en, en salino y hacen lo mismo porque es el mismo efecto pero para ellos es mejor porque es más barato que el PEC um, and I think that maybe uh, the swift coagulation mode uh, it's less uh, is uh, more effective than force coagulation mode because force uh, makes the uh, fat tissue to explode against the lens. Yes. So maybe yes. Swift also could be a tip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank you very much. And um, uh, let me see. It just, uh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. So, uh, Dr. Rueda, 
uh, you know him in Lua Imperial uh, uh, say con uh, thank you very much uh, and he would like to know um, about Ah, what do you use in, uh, in on the colonic ESD for stop the peristalsis? The peristalsis, the movement. Uh, uh. I think uh, Dr. Rueda le dio con otro gran secreto. <laughs> 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 Dr. Ichia. Yeah. Because he said that, I, I'm not sure, but Dr. Mm. Rueda is m mixing things. He first uh, uh, wants to know if propofol has any effect yeah. on the peristaltism, and uh, if no, if you have any tips on that. On colon uh, we uh, usually uh, use uh, buscopan if the patient is young and uh, it, mm, the patient doesn't have the a heart disease. So if the uh, buscopan cannot use a pati the patient cannot use, uh, we uh, sometimes uh, use uh, lidocaine. Uh, the mix the uh, injection solutions. So lidocaine sometimes affect to uh, avoid the uh, peristasis. Aquí se acaba de abrir otro gran secreto. No sé si escucharon bien, pero en el fondo lo que ellos hacen es eh, usar un poquito de chirocaína cuando yo estaba ahí. Ahora parece que lidocaína también y lo mezclan con el mucoap. Y eso a veces puede ser para disminuir un poquito el peristaltismo. Um, la doc, uh, doctor, uh, do, female doctor from Peru, uh, Leslie Barbach, would like to know if you can um, explain a little bit more about the monoballoon uh, method in order to mm. face the, these lesions uh, in the gastric angle. Yeah. Uh, could you explain a little bit more? Uh, it's produced by tops. So uh, usually. Uh, the uh, attach the just above the bending areas so and then i forgot the amount of the uh, air the detail but uh, uh checking the visualize so if you appropriate the amount of the uh, so you you can read the uh But uh, I think uh, it's important to uh, see the appropriate amount of the ears. So uh, if you the appropriate the uh, uh, visual, it's important to visualize to the close approaching the regions. So that it's a good uh, good amount of the ears. So and, and I would like to go further on that question. Yeah. And uh, I, uh, for as far as I know, there are three main methods uh, for facing this kind of lesion. One uh, for less to more expensive or complex. The first one would be uh, um, to pressure yes. in the stomach patient. Yes. Then uh, you can have the mono balloon. Yeah. And last, you can use the double bending scope. Yes. So, what do you think is the more effective or your preference uh, mm. among that? Those three methods. Uh, March bending and the uh, monobaron method is uh, more almost same. Yeah, but uh, if the patient is uh, obese, the, uh, the pressure of the stomach, uh, uh, the abdomen is it's not effective. So it's depend, but but. Uh, if the there is not much bending scope and the monobalance, uh you can try the colonoscope. Uh, by the colonoscope is a little bit harder. Uh, the uh, bending, yeah, bending is a wider. Yes. Uh -huh. well, so interesting because uh, we don't have mono balloon mm. and we don't have multi bending scope. So if we face that kind of lesion, and we have faced that kind of lesion. Yes, pediatric uh, colonoscope. Pediatric colonoscope would be the... Final, finally. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you very much. So Dr. Adolfo Parra, he's from Spain. Uh, he was a very, very uh, good uh, colleague here in Chile, and now he's working in England, in mm -hmm. the UK. 
Um, he has uh, worked a lot uh, on counter-traction methods, yeah. on especially on gastric ESD. Yeah. So he would like to know your opinion about counter-traction on colonic ESD. Mm. Do you have any tip or comments about that? Uh, <coughs> no. Uh, in Japan, it's a, a new release, the SO clip. This uh, kind of clip is a clip with uh, strings. And then initially, uh, the same as uh, the, uh, the edge of the tumor, put and deploy the clip. And then the how, uh, spring edge, the opposite wall uh, with the clips. So it can uh, create the counter traction. So Sorry, the first uh, clip is attached to what? To a string? Uh, uh, the tumor edge. And huh? then the clip has a strings a with, strings. A, uh, with a loop. loop. And mm -hmm. then uh, you grasp the uh, second clip, grasp the loop with strings opposite tumors, uh, the wall. Opposite the wall. Healthy wall. Yes. Healthy mucosa. Yes. Healthy so, mucosa. what company released that system? Uh, Zion. Zion. Zion Medicals. But I think that I it should be very interesting for Adolfo because, as mm. far as I know, he described. Uh, I don't remember. Uh, Adolfo, si estás en el ahí, por favor, dinos dónde publicaste tu tu método eh, por el WhatsApp, por favor. Because uh, Dr. Parra uh, published uh, this uh, method uh, with a clip, but uh, with a rubber band, mm. like. The Hi, for yeah. a dentist, and use the same. Mm. Then second clip, uh, catch the rubber and yeah. to the healthy mucosa. Mm. But he used mainly in the stomach. I think mm. maybe he has mm. never used in the colon, maybe in the oh. rectum, but not in the colon. Okay, we will wait about the Dr. Parra uh, res res uh, answer. Um, and uh, okay, just a little bit, uh, wait a little bit. Okay. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, El Dr. Rodrigo Jimenez de Brasil, of course you know him. Uh, he has been in Kobe with us uh, yeah. two times. Uh, send your greeting, send his greetings, and he would like to know if you have a uh, known or you do c could you recommend another uh, um, solution different from Muco App for us in, La in South America to use in colonic ESD? Mm. Uh, it's a uh, Mainly two kind of the solutions. Uh, it's one is uh, glycerol. Glycerol, uh, uh, in even if ja in Japan, uh, usually some uh, facility <coughs> use uh, the, its uh, solutions. And then uh, and the, the the other one is uh, usually use body bands. So it's a colloid solutions. So if the uh, pressure a uh, shock patient using uh, colloid solutions. So uh, mainly two type of the uh, solution usually use uh, the. I'm sorry, but in Japan there is there are doctors who use volume for colonic ESD. Uh, I'm not sure, but some doctor use uh, glycerol. Glycerol. Yes. And in your personal opinion, is glycerol? Equally effective as mucoap, or let's mm. say equally safe, safely, is uh, or not. <laughs> I'm I I don't know because uh, uh, in Japan in Japan is uh, usually uh, can get uh, get the mucoap, so uh, I never use the without uh, a mucoap. So <laughs> I'm sorry, so but. Uh, uh, but, but uh, I'm sorry, but it's very important for us yes. in, in South America. So yes. if you are uh, making a live, mm. if we invite you to a live here next year mm. and we don't have muco up and we have a yeah. uh, LST non-granular type mm. uh, in the transverse colon, uh, would you be willing to use voluven or glycerol <laughs> or you will ask for yeah. us to have muco up for that kind of ESD procedure? If uh, I have an offer from this kind. Uh, I tried to the ex vivo models, so and <laughs> before the uh, human procedures. So I I try which is uh, better. I try to check the which is better solutions. 
So, so definitely we uh, is very recommended to have mu crop for colonic yeast. Yes. Yes, I think so. No. Yeah. So uh, just 50 10 seconds, pero tenemos en el fondo disponible en Chile, no sé si en otros países de Sudamérica, ustedes díganme por el chat eh, Sigma Bisc que del, hasta donde yo sé el doctor Toyonaga ha hecho en Italia y es de con Sigma Bisc y no le encuentra ninguna diferencia clínica al Mucoap y, y nosotros también hemos tenido la oportunidad de ocupar los dos y, y, y en realidad no hay mucha diferencia clínica así que tenemos Sigma Bisc que es muy similar y de hecho es muy similar en precio también, es carísimo así que <ríe> quizás eh, esa es una alternativa um, and uh, doctor Nicolás González, again from Uruguay would like to know uh, about the strategy Uh, of colonic ESD because um, he knows uh, and we know many experts different uh, strategies yeah. different knives so could you uh, tell us just in, in, in a few minutes about your recommendation if you can resume your strategy in colonic ESD mm. please uh, Yes, uh, now I'm uh, thinking the most uh, ideal <laughs> procedures. Uh, but we are mainly, uh, the I would like to show the... Uh, you can the do it, please. Uh, mainly we can cut the about half incisions. So, and then create the crop. So we cut the uh, outside, uh, inside to outside. So, and then finally uh, we cut the opposite side. And then, uh, but uh, some expert uh, propose a pocket creation method. So I, s I some cases I try to Uh, this uh, method. Um, the we recommend the uh, uh, mm, semi pedunculate large polyp is uh, useful for pocket prehension method because uh, some uh, some of them uh, the this polyp has a uh, muscularly uh, reactive uh, uh, muscle uh, fibrosis. yes uh, have a fibrosis the mainly the center of the tumors so if you cut the centers uh, more uh, so uh, it has a uh, fibrosis more easy to cut the uh, uh, pocket creation method. So it's uh, very suitable for the uh, uh, semi pedunculated large polyp. S yeah, but mm, the, uh, sometimes I try to mm, with different kind of polyps. Um, I think a uh, uh, little bit beginners more easy to master the uh, pocket creation method, mm, but uh, mm, uh, now uh, thinking about idea <laughs> procedures. I'm sorry, just 10 minutes. Entonces, en resumen, la estrategia de él sería solamente inyectar primero la mitad que uno está enfrentando, digamos en el fondo distal, eh, en, el, en el colon y recto, o oral en algunas situaciones del estómago, o distal cuando uno está en retrovisión. Eh, y se inyecta esa mitad, se corta la mucosa, se hace la desconexión y se trata de generar el flap. Y cuando eso ya ha terminado, más o menos en la mitad de la lesión, se inyecta todo el resto, se corta todo el resto y finalmente se sigue desde lateral, hacia adentro, en el fondo dejando para el final la parte central, esa es su técnica y eh, actualmente está muy en boga el, la técnica de la, de la creación del bolsillo, descrita por el doctor Yamamoto de la Universidad de Ichi que ellos encuentran que él lo, ellos lo hacen para todo, pero ellos en Kobe encuentran que tiene su máxima utilidad en las lesiones muy grandes, semipedunculadas de colon, porque en general esas lesiones tienen mucha fibrosis en la parte central de manera que si uno deja la parte central 
para con el primer método que él explicó y eh, como la lesión es muy grande uno no va a tener después cómo generar eh, cómo enfrentar la parte de la fibrosis va a ser muy difícil porque la lesión va a caer para un lado o para otro y no vamos a poder generar contratracción entonces en ese tipo específico de lesiones ellos recomiendan hacer la técnica del bolsillo porque aún ahí uno tiene una estabilidad asegurada del, del endoscopio y puede primero cortar esa zona de fibrosis y después sigue con la periferia I'm sorry I was just uh, telling that and uh, just uh, for all to know uh, Dr. Adolfo Parra said that uh, he published uh, in the, uh, gastrointestinal endoscopy in 2011 and he has used uh, that method in rectum and colon he said but he thinks that uh, after you have to retrieval and take out the the second clip it can bleed a little bit mm. that uh, he has used uh, he, and I don't want to finish this session uh, without um, comments or questions uh, uh, Dr. Royan, por favor por favor, una pregunta, no nos puedes hacer una pregunta Just a question in, 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 your, in your experience in Japan which cases are now sent to EMR? Uh, Is there any case that you prefer to use EMR instead of ESD? Uh, um, less than two centimeters is uh, usually uh, dissect by EMR procedure. So uh, it's uh, size. Uh, the one point is the size, but uh, even if the less than two centimeters uh, flat and the depressed region is, uh, we uh, usually uh, hybrid ESDs usually uh, dissect by hybrid ESDs. So uh, we uh, uh, the we want to uh, dissect by embryo. So um, especially our facilities uh, uh, more. Uh, uh, I hope to dissect by embryo. So mm, before more. Uh, indication of the EMR is uh, more wide, but uh, now is a uh, little bit narrow the <laughs> indication of the EMR. And last question, yeah. Dr. Inoue told mm -hmm. us uh, a year ago that there is about, I, I'm not sure it is right, but there is about 20,000 endoscopists mm -hmm. in Japan. Yes, yes, 20,000, about, about uh, 20,000 uh, endoscopies yeah, in the which Japan. Which is, I, I think, the third uh, bigger uh, so, uh, uh, society in Japan, which there are many endoscopies in Japan. Yes. Which are the proportion of those in that perform ESD? Uh, but uh, ESD is... Uh, 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 even if the uh, Kobe University is uh, five or six uh, endoscopies only perform the ESDs. So uh, more lesser than uh, almost the uh, endoscopies is uh, only concentrated the screening procedures. So therapeutic endoscopies uh, and then uh, we are uh, now big hospitals uh, uh, separate between the ERCP and the U.S. Uh, department and the ESD and the therapeutic uh, uh, department. Now big in the ho big hospitals are completely uh, separated. So uh, but uh, I think uh, more than there is, uh, mm, uh, if the correct ESD uh, master, ma uh, the expert, uh, two or three hundred uh, endoscopes can master uh, ESD procedures in Japan, I think. What's new in the ESD? Uh, what happened with the 
carbon dioxide laser <coughs> or other things? Uh, what's the, uh, the yeah, we are usually use uh, carbon dioxide to insufferations uh, because I, before, if the perforated uh, uh, air uh, insufferations, uh, very severe uh, pneumoperitonitis occurred, and, and then so. But now, uh, if you use uh, CO2 insufferation, even if the perforated, not so severe situation become not uh, be does not become severe uh, situations. So, uh, and I think that Dr. Fortes would like to know what are the last news mm. about technology on ESD. Uh, For instance. Could you tell about it, about uh, Professor Morita mm. research on laser uh, ESD and no physical knife? Mm. Or uh, the, the, the research on ESD is toward what area now uh. and the future? Please. Mm. Um, it's a very difficult po uh, question because uh, now uh, in Japan it's uh, almost established uh, ESD procedures, but I think uh, mm, next uh, breakthrough is uh, it's like a robotic uh, yes, because uh, still uh, uh, ESD is a still difficult procedure. So some uh, the more the more uh, more uh, doctors can easy to uh, master procedure is uh, mm, next generation is uh, robotics uh, so and the AI. <laughs> I think I think for the for all of us in Chile is difficult even to get uh, just a knife. Mm. So robotics. <laughs> Maybe we should learn to perform ESD <laughs> because uh, I, I, when I think on robotics, I think on very expensive <laughs> yes. things. But it will be amazing to see uh, make reality the thing of the robot on endoscopy as well mm. for this kind of purposes. So I think that okay, Doctor Ishida, again, thank you very much for outstanding lecture for your willing to be with us to teach us. Uh, that's all I, I want to say that thank you so much for your lecture um, in the name of all of us in Chile and of course in from our friends from all South America and Europe as well thank you very much Dr. Ishii thank you very much, thank you very much.